Okay, so in this video we're going to find the Laplace transform of t squared times e to the 2t, and we're going to do it the long way. We're going to do it using the definition of the Laplace transform. Let's go ahead and work through it. So, solution. So, recall the Laplace transform of a function of time, f of t, is equal to the improper integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative st times our function of time f of t and then dt. So in this particular example, f of t is equal to t squared times e to the 2t. So we have the Laplace transform of t squared e to the 2t. And this is equal to the improper integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative st. And then f of t is t squared e to the 2t. So you replace f of t with this piece here, t squared e to the 2t. And then we have the dt. At this point, I guess we can combine some, some like terms. We can add the exponents on the exponentials. So this is equal to uh, the improper integral from 0 to infinity. I'm going to put the t squared in the front here. And we're going to add the negative st to the 2t. So I'm going to do it on the side over here. Um, so we have negative st plus 2t. That's going to be our exponent. And what we can do with this is we can pull out, um, I guess we can pull out a t. So this is t negative s plus 2 or t 2 minus s, right, rewriting it. So this is going to be e, right, adding these exponents, e, we said that's going to be t to the 2 minus s, there we go, dt, beautiful stuff. All right, so now we have to integrate this. So you can use integration by parts two times to do this. Uh, I know that because of the 2 on the t squared. Or you can use something called tabular integration. Let's go ahead and use tabular because that is the fastest way to do it. So tabular integration works when one of the factors after repeated differentiation is eventually zero. So t squared is that factor. So in this case, we'll write down t squared. And then we'll differentiate. So the derivative of t squared is 2t. Its derivative is 2 and its derivative is 0. Okay, so we pick 1 and differentiate, and it has to eventually be 0. The next step is to pick 1 to integrate. So that would be the other factor, so e to the t, and then 2 minus s. So I don't know if you all know this, but when you integrate something like e to the 2x dx, you just get e to the 2x, and then you divide by 2 and you add your constant, right? So here we're just going to keep dividing by 2 minus s. So it'll be 1 over 2 minus s, e to the t, 2 minus s. Doing it again, it's going to be 1 over, and then 2 minus s squared, right? Because it's being multiplied. e to the t, 2 minus s. Then one more time, right? 1 over 2 minus s cubed, e to the t, 2 minus s. The last thing we do is insert the signs. We always start with plus. So it's plus, minus, plus, minus. And then we just follow the arrows. Boom, boom, boom. All right, so let's continue the problem. We have the Laplace transform of t squared e to the 2t. By the way, I forgot to mention this at the beginning of the video. My s is a cursive s. I always forget to mention that. So um, I just do that so it doesn't look like a 5, right? Because you have 5s. See? Oh, well, that's okay. But if I do 5s, that's not okay. <laughs> so, all right, this is equal to following the arrows. It's going to be t squared over 2 minus s e to the t 2 minus s uh, minus, okay, minus uh, 2t. So minus 2t, so 2t over. Um, and then following the arrows, we're going to this one now. I almost messed up. Uh, 2 minus s squared. Very easy to mess up here. e to the t, 2 minus s, right, following the arrows. Now we're going to the last arrow. It looks like the last one is plus. So plus 2 over, okay, 2 minus s cubed, 
e to the t, 2 minus s. And we're going from 0 to infinity, okay? So some people like to plug in the infinity symbol. Uh, I'm really against that. I don't, I don't believe that's correct. Uh, infinity is not a number. So what we're going to do in the next step uh, is we're going to replace infinity with the letter b. That's all I'm going to do. So we have limit b goes to infinity, and we'll put a b there. So I'm going to rewrite all of this one more time. So it's t squared, 2 minus s. I suppose I could have factored something out, but it's too late, right? I could have, could have pulled this out. Uh, it would have saved me some writing, but live and learn. <laughs> so this is e to the t, uh, uh, 2 minus s. I usually don't pull it out, so it would have been out of character for me, I guess, to do that. I usually don't. Uh, pull stuff out. So this is t, 2 minus s. Then we have plus 2 over, uh, looks like 2 minus s cubed, e to the t, uh, 2 minus s. Beautiful stuff. And then we're going from 0 to b. All right, so now we plug in the b first, subtract, and then plug in the zeros. This is equal to the limit as b goes to infinity. Okay, we're plugging in the b first. And the b gets plugged in for all of the t's, okay? So it's going to be little b squared over and then 2 minus s, e to the b, 2 minus s, minus 2b over 2 minus s squared, e to the b, and then 2 minus s, plus 2 over 2 minus s cubed, e to the b, 2 minus s, minus, and then I'm going to use brackets here because we have three terms. Now we're going to plug in 0 for the t. So this is going to be 0, beautiful stuff. I love when stuff is 0. 0, beautiful stuff. And then over here, we're going to get e to the 0. So this piece here is going to be 1, right, because your t is 0. So we're left with plus 2 over 2 minus s cubed. So now uh, we have to take these limits. So let's just do it intuitively. Let me just explain why the answer is what it is. Let's maybe, let's maybe look at this first term here. Okay, let's talk about this one. So you can, you can rewrite this first term as follows. Um, you can pull out the 1 over 2 minus s. It's going to be irrelevant. We're not going to need it. The b squared stays upstairs. And you can bring this e downstairs. So that's a, in general, you want to do that. When you bring the e downstairs, it becomes negative b, 2 minus s, right? It becomes negative b, uh, 2 minus s. Okay, negative b, 2 minus s. And then, again, you want to rewrite it again. So this is going to be b squared over e to the b, and then distribute the minus, so s minus 2. Okay, you want everything to look like this. Whenever you're, when you, whenever you're doing one of these problems, you want to be like b to a power over like e to the b times some stuff, okay? If it's written like this, you can think about it and you can get the answer. How? I'm about to show you, okay? So the first thing I did was I brought it downstairs. When I did that, I had to put a negative sign there, okay? And then I distributed the negative so I got here. Sometimes you don't have to do this. Like it's already in this form, right? Um, let me scroll back up and show you. Up here at the beginning of the question, right here, right here, I pulled out a t. If I would have pulled out like a negative, um, a negative t, it would have been s minus 2. It would have been that instead. And this probably would have made this, this step I'm doing now a little bit easier. But that's too late. So we're here. So you bring it down and you get this. All right, so let's think about what's happening here. b is going to infinity, right? So the numerator is going to infinity and the denominator is going to infinity. But the bottom has an exponential function, right? So it's growing way faster than the top. So the bottom is getting huge, right? Because exponential functions grow faster than polynomials. So this is going to approach 0, right? Because exponential functions grow faster. Now, that's only going to be the case if the e stays downstairs, OK? Well, b is positive. So e will stay downstairs as long as this whole piece here is positive. That means that s minus 2 has to be positive, right? Because you want this, you want this to stay downstairs, right? So you want this whole piece here to be positive. B is already positive, so s minus two must be positive. So s is bigger than two. So this is really important. Um, 
it's important to note this in your answer. So this is going to be zero, same thing on the next one. Zero, same thing on the next one. Zero, right? Because the E's are there. The E's are going to make it zero. They're all going to come downstairs, and they're going to blow up, and these limits are all going to be zero. Now you distribute the minus here. So you get minus 2 over 2 minus s cubed. So it's minus 2 over parentheses 2 minus s cubed. And in all of this, s is bigger than 2. So that is the final answer. So when you get to this part here, uh, again, your goal is to write, and if you have an e, write it like this. And then in order for this to be 0, in order for this limit to be 0, your stuff has to be positive. Here's another example. Check it out. Why not? If you're still with me, it's worth showing you. Say you had, say you had this. Limit b goes to infinity, b to the fourth over e to the b, s minus 8. Okay, in this case, b is going to infinity, so b is positive. The e has to stay downstairs, so you want s minus 8 to be positive. So you want s to be bigger than 8. And under those conditions, this limit is 0. I hope this video has been helpful uh, to someone who is learning differential equations and Laplace transforms. That's it.